Juliet and welcome back to Mama Tried. Today I have three toddler meal ideas for you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All of the recipes will be over on my Instagram so that way you can screenshot them from there. And I've also created shopping lists for you if you wanna go ahead and screenshot those now to make your shopping easy or even if you wanna do a grocery pickup. Let's go ahead and get started. For breakfast, we're having mini veggie muffins, and I like to set out all of my ingredients before I ever even get started, preheat the oven, and spray any pans that I'll be using. Now I'm just peeling and chopping one medium carrot and one medium zucchini to go in the food processor. To scrape down the sides in between processing it just to make sure that everything gets chopped evenly and I know that I'm done whenever each piece is smaller than a grain of rice. Now I'm adding three large eggs to the food processor. Also adding in 1 fourth cup of whole organic plain yogurt. You can use whatever yogurt that you prefer just as long as it's whole fat. And 1 third cup of extra virgin olive oil. You can use avocado oil if you prefer just something that cooks at a high heat. I'm also adding in 1 third cup of coconut sugar. I like using coconut sugar over regular cane sugar because it has a lower glycemic index. I'm also adding in 1 tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And 2 teaspoons of vanilla extract. And 1 cup of flour. One tablespoon of cinnamon. Adding one teaspoon of baking powder. One fourth teaspoon of sea salt. Now I'm just going to process everything until it's mixed thoroughly. Each mini muffin cup takes about two tablespoons of the mixture, so I'm just adding that in. And also make sure that you've sprayed your muffin cups or you're using silicone liners so it doesn't stick to the pan. I had some leftover mixture, so I'm just going to add it into this mini loaf pan. Now I'm just adding in the mini muffins and the loaf pan into my oven at 350 degrees. I'm going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the mixture has become spongy. Once that's done cooking, I'm just going to let it cool for about 10 minutes so that way the muffins easily come out of the pan. And then I'm going to transfer it over to a baking rack to let it cool completely. These are good in the refrigerator for three days or in the freezer for up to three months. Make sure if you're freezing them that they have completely cooled before putting them into a bag or a freezer safe container. These can be served for breakfast, lunch, or even snacks, and I like to serve them with fruit on the side. So let's see what Luxie thinks. 
おいしいいいめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめえめええーうんうん、んピーピーピーピーピーピーピーピーピーピーピーピーピーピー Muffin. Hey, man. <laughs> For lunch, I'm making sloppy joe bites, so I am just melting one tablespoon of butter, and then I will be adding in two pounds of ground beef. <laughs> Half a teaspoon of sea salt, now it's time to prepare the veggies so I am chopping and dicing one medium bell pepper making sure that I don't get any of the seeds and I take out the membranes too because I just don't like that part it's too chewy. Just chopping and dicing one small onion. I chose yellow onions just because I feel like they're easier to cook with with things like this and I'll show you a pretty cool way at least I think it's pretty cool of how to dice an onion so it doesn't take forever and I just want to mention in here if you're new to my channel I am not a chef <laughs> I'm not a nutritionist I just do the best that I can for my daughter and this is how I do it, so I figured I'd share with you. And here I am just mincing four cloves of garlic. Now I'm just stirring and breaking apart the ground beef and it looks like it's almost ready to be done. So now what I'm going to do is strain the ground beef over a bowl so that way I can get any of the fat because I want some of that fat to make the sauce. Now I'm just adding that drained fat back into the pan and I'll be adding in my bell pepper and onion. I'm just going to cook the onion and bell pepper in the fat for about seven minutes or until the veggies become tender. Oops, I almost forgot to add in the remaining half teaspoon of sea salt. After that seven minutes is up, I'm going to go ahead and add in my minced garlic and cook for about a minute or two just until it becomes fragrant. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm just returning the ground beef back into the pan and mixing everything well together. Then I will be adding in two teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of paprika, and then it's supposed to be two tablespoons of tomato paste, but I was supposed to be using one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce as well, but they didn't put it in my grocery pickup order and I just realized as I was making this. So I made tomato sauce out of the tomato paste, so that's why I'm using extra. I would recommend using tomato sauce if you have it, but if you don't, you can always use an alternate ingredient. And how I do that is I just Google it, honestly. I look up what I can alternate something out or something I can replace if I don't have it on hand because, you know, I'm not going to just throw away my recipe because I don't have an ingredient. Anyways, after that, I'm going to be adding in two tablespoons of yellow mustard, three tablespoons of pure maple syrup, and one teaspoon of molasses, and one cup of bone broth. I'm using chicken bone broth. You can use water or you can even use beef bone broth, just whatever you have on hand. Now I'm just mixing everything together with a wooden spoon or spatula or whatever that is. And then I'll be using my star ground beef masher thing that I have. You could use a potato masher just so that way everything is finer and more like a sauce. So that's what I'll be doing. And then I will let it simmer on low to medium for about 15 minutes. While that's cooking, I'm getting all of my ingredients together and going ahead and getting started on the Sloppy Joe cups. So I'm preheating my oven to 400 degrees, spraying my mini muffin pan, and getting started on the dough mixture. I'm putting in two cups of cassava flour and making a giant mess. Now the reason that I chose this flour is because it's gluten free and grain free. Now you can use whatever flour you want. You don't have to use this flour, but this is just what I chose. Now I'm using one and three fourths cup of coconut milk. Again, you do not have to use coconut milk. You can use dairy milk or whatever milk that you prefer. I just prefer this recipe with coconut milk. Now I'm adding in two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and two teaspoons of baking powder. Now I'm adding in one teaspoon of sea salt and one teaspoon of raw honey. Now it's time to mix it up. You can use a hand mixer and you probably should use a hand mixer, but Luxie was taking a nap and I really didn't want to wake her up. On to actually making the cups. I put a little bit of coconut oil on my hand so that way the dough wouldn't stick to my hand so bad. But now I'm just taking out about one inch balls and I'm going to be placing each one into the mini muffin cup and then putting my fingers in it to actually shape the cup, if that makes sense. So then I'm going to do all of those. Once that part is done, I'm just scooping out the Sloppy Joe mixture into each one of the cups. It's about a tablespoon that goes into each one, so I've just got a little scooper that was very helpful, but if you have a tablespoon measuring cup, you can do that as well and it'll work just as good. Also to add, I will be putting Amazon links for the products that I'm using, and if I can't find the exact ones, I'll put in some that are very similar, so that way if you're interested in purchasing them, you can. 
I would really appreciate if you did use my link because I am an Amazon associate. So if you purchase from my link, I may make a very small commission, but it's something. Now I'm just popping those in the oven for about 15 to 18 minutes and it took about 18 minutes. So just so you know. I'm just putting the remaining sloppy joe mixture into a container so that way later on I can do it as sandwiches. I really like it this way and so does Luxie and if you don't want to make the cups you can do it this way too and it'll save you time and ingredients. After they are done cooking I just pull one of them out to make sure that the bottom of the cup is completely done cooking and then I'm just going to set them to the side for about 10 minutes to let them cool and let's see what Luxie thinks. dinner we're having creamy potato soup. I'm just adding four tablespoons of butter into a large pot over medium high heat. I didn't have any bacon grease so that's why I used four tablespoons but you should use three tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of bacon grease. It just gives it that bacony flavor but I didn't have any and I wasn't going to the store just to get that. So now I'm just prepping my veggies. So I'm doing two medium carrots, two medium onions, and two medium ribs of celery. And I'm just adding them to the pot as I'm done chopping them. <laughs> Once all of the veggies are in the pot, I'm going to add some sea salt, mix it together, and cook it for about 7 to 10 minutes or until the veggies are pretty soft. I've already washed and scrubbed 3 pounds of yellow potatoes. Now I'm just chopping them up into about half inch cubes to go into the soup. I'm mincing four cloves of garlic. Once the veggies are pretty soft, I'm going to go ahead and add the potatoes and the garlic. And I'm going to let that simmer for about 10 minutes. While that's simmering, I'm going to prepare my kale. So I'm just taking about three cups of kale and chopping it up very finely. Once the 10 minutes are up, I'm going to be adding one fourth cup of flour. Also, one fourth cup of bone broth. Now I'm going to be mixing everything together and then cooking for about five to seven minutes until the potatoes are very soft. 
Once the five minutes was up, I scooped out half of the soup mixture into a large bowl so that way I can use my immersion blender to blend half of it and then return it back into the pot. If you do not have an immersion blender, you can use a countertop blender. Just make sure that the mixture has cooled completely before doing so. Now I'm just mixing it together and adding in my kale and then I'm going to let it simmer for about two to three minutes so the kale will wilt. When the kale is wilted, I'm just adding in half a cup of coconut milk and then I'm going to stir it in and it'll be ready to go. If you want the soup to be more liquidy, you could add more milk, just whatever you prefer. I'm just adding in some black pepper to taste and then it's ready to go. So let's see what Luxie thinks. Those are all of the toddler meal ideas that I have for today. I really hope that you liked this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel and make sure that you're subscribed with the bell notifications on so that way you don't miss any of my videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram so that way you can screenshot the recipes. But that was everything and I hope that you have an awesome day. Bye!